Well, good. Here we are again. Um, what kind of intro? We're, did we do elections last time? I yeah. think we did. Okay. We talked about elections. <laughs> well, there's been changes, some changes. I was kind of hopeful. I told you guys, uh, uh, I sent that, that link about uh, maybe they're getting together or something, at least for the dreamers. Uh, fine, I didn't send this other one. Uh, then I read that the GOP is saying no to everything. Uh, no dreamers, no anything. That the, the, the evaluative article was, um, uh, they say they want to do something about things, but they don't want to. That was just part of the show. Mm. And so I feel bad. I feel bad for them because I don't think it's just the dreamers. I think the, the companies are really, really craving some movement. The more H-1Bs, you know, H-1As, just, just labor, labor. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that would be good for the Republican Party because they, there's a lot of things that just are not controlled for very well. But in any case... So this morning, it was early because I couldn't sleep. So it was about 2 or 3 a.m. when I saw that. Uh, it was on a tweet. I felt horrible uh, that I had put myself out for hope again and got slapped. Got turned down to the dance again. Yeah. I think, honestly, the Republican Party generally is in a really difficult spot. They're just caught between the jaws uh, on one side of, you know, the crazy uh, white nationalist, uh, Christian nationalist, that, that whole, whatever you call that, the, the MAGA movement, and, and their business-friendly preferences, and they're just stuck. They're stuck there. <laughs> Neither side will let them leave, and so they try to appease the business side by just more deregulation, lower taxes, you know, just keep pumping, just throw cash at them, basically, and say, okay, please love us still because we're giving you money. And then they try to appease their uh, crazy base by just doing horrible things that are just inhuman. And so uh, one side or the other, nobody, everybody hates them. <laughs> Even yeah. the people they're trying to appease hate them. They, they just see it as yeah, a they're not making any progress. Yeah. Here it is. Um, I, 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 knew, I know that I had to cut it on a tweet, but I did take a screenshot of it. Uh, this guy's Charles Cox says, as I have said repeatedly for years, it is, the, it is the GOP stopping all positive hashtag immigration legislation. You cannot even find 10 GOP senators to support the DREAM Act. Shame on them. The GOP needs to keep immigration as a wedge issue. It has no interest in solving this problem. It's in response to a political article, which might be interesting to take a look at, in which, uh, well, early this morning. So I'll, I'll look it up and bring it on screen. Uh, mm -hmm. I generally trust political. Uh, <clears throat> and so they must have an insight that I had not yet seen. Uh, anyway. You're, you're right in that, in, in, in that, but I think to myself, for so long, the Republicans were really pushing well for their, for their business base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't have any sympathy for them, but I just, I sort of recognize that it's not as easy from, as it might look from the outside, like, oh, just go ahead and do it, you know, <laughs> lose a few votes and go ahead and do what you think is best. It's, it's like, that's not going to work because their crazy side is really crazy. And they, I was reading just a little while ago that, uh, interestingly, out in Arizona, the election officials, there, some, uh, at least one prominent election official had to go into hiding on election night because there were so many death threats against him. And uh, interestingly, the, the election deniers who are making these death threats generally are doing it towards Republican elected election folks, not so much uh, Democrats. So they're, they're like trying, threatening their own. It's like the Russians shooting 
uh, deserters who are trying to go back from the front line. So they shoot their own troops uh, when they're trying to retreat. It just it's like that's not a winning strategy in the long run. It may be like a desperate act right now, but in the end, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, it works in the short run. Uh, they certainly scare a lot of people over the last two, three years. Uh, so, <clears throat> one thing, if it's worked before, why would why don't why wouldn't it work again? <laughs> well, right? see. they keep on doing it. It's one of their marks. When I got to be an adult, I I, I learned that the, the 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 Democrats were all over the place. But the Republicans could get three points, repeat them over and over again, and it would be the topic that everybody talks about and eventually maybe even policy. Um, my first encounter with that on immigration was when, uh, I forget his name now, I'm glad I forgot his name. Uh, we need a, we need a, a fence.com. It was literally two people in Pennsylvania Hmm. They put up that website. Um, they called the um, what's it called Comcast One, which is the the default channel when you open the Comcast in the Northeast. They kept calling and calling. Is anybody going to answer them? This is this is uh, this is uh, uh, such a big idea. Blah blah blah. And nobody on our side would want to do wanted to to talk to them. And eventually I got put forward because it was, well, it was affecting us. There was a mm -hmm. lot of people that started saying, well, that's, that's not a bad idea. And, and the website was like two, two inches deep. Um, so I went on about with the guy, uh, but I researched them. And if it, it was a 501c4 that had three or four other big time donors, the guy that was representing the website was uh, earning a good salary. I think at the time they didn't have a 990 yet, but they, there was somehow a reporting on on uh, on the monies that were coming in. And it was like, this is so atrocious. They've hired out two people to start a website, make a ruckus, and then uh, just profil proliferate it through, through all the media channels. But of course, I wasn't that deep either. <laughs> I was just a couple of guys who were trying to keep up a, a, a website. Uh, and I thought to myself, isn't that so funny that things can be multiplied and massified? Because Comcast One had like a, a million viewers. It was like the show itself was a big deal. Hmm. Uh, and of course, that was in 05, 06 probably. Is it, it isn't until 10 years later that, that what's his name, puts it up and it's a big campaign issue. But it was a seed of an idea. It wasn't even like, I don't know, one post on the fence. At the time, it was just a distraction tactic that then became a, a massified single issue repeated over and over and then somebody picks it up. So. Anyway, I found the article from, from Politico. Uh, it's not bad, but it's sad. Uh, what can I say? Here it is. I'll make it big once it comes up. If I can try to see what you see in my mind. There it is. And so then it goes through what I just uh, pointed out. Uh, this is in May that, you know, our Senator Durbin was up there again on the topic. Um, the Senate passed the bill in 13. I remember that bill. Mm -hmm. You know. And Rubio says, Democrats are crazy. I haven't heard much of, from him recently. I think he was just trying to keep his head down. The bullets are fine. And he does not seem like a viable candidate at this point. 
Anyway, hmm. there's a Democrat and a Republican <clears throat> going to put together something. Yeah. But it's a long shot. Anyway, that, that let me down. Not so easy. Uh, because once again, the DACA kids, by now they're not kids. Is that you, Carolyn, that said that last time? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you take the date of acceptance, since they haven't taken any for so long, any, any you know, DACAs, uh, yeah, these people are all in their 30s or more. So. Yeah, just imagine the entire life of being unsettled and insecure. Yeah, there was a good article on, let me stop that. What is it? There was a good article, I think it was NPR, or it might have been just a, 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 a column, but that it was like, if, if the DACA kids had been allowed uh, and given a path to legalization, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, actually, I remember standing with Senator Hatch in 2001, Republican, very diehard Republican, uh, with my daughter trying to get him close. And my daughter was a cute little girl. And so I figured they would want to uh, be seen in a picture with a nice, pretty little girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. So bad. But, uh, and he was, he had signed on to it. So I was just, I wanted to see how well we, how we could multiply that good effort. Anyway, that was in 2001, 20 years hmm. on those dreamers. Let them miss out for the country. Anyway, that's my sad part for today. Yeah. And it's just, there's no actual excuse. That's what's so infuriating to me about it. Uh, it's a political game, obviously. That's infuriating. But also, there isn't even a reasonably decent excuse. I can rem I'm old enough to remember when the arguments between Republicans and Democrats were more like you could go, ah, well, that makes sense, I guess, in this way. And that makes sense in this way. And I, I think this is right and this is wrong, but I do get where they're coming from. But it's been a long time since I have heard any argument uh, from those guys that makes any sense at all to me. It's it's just starting out with the the uh, end result and then going backwards and trying to come up with a premise that makes it seem like you there was actually a thought process involved. And I don't see why there aren't more people that understand that and recognize it and just say, wait, we this is no good. I reject it. No well, second lesson. The facts don't matter. Yeah. The do. statistics on immigration, whether it's economic contribution mm -hmm. or whether the amount of crime or how much uh, health risk they, they, they are, all of those are pro immigration answers. The statistics are very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Those facts don't matter when it comes to swaying uh, the debate. And so that's lesson number two for me, having been in this for a little bit now, is since that doesn't matter, then what does? And you're saying it doesn't make sense at all, so it's not sense. It's emotion. That's right. right? So then it's emotion. Because mm -hmm. if it's not sense, what is it? It's emotions, uh, <clears throat> fear. Fear works. That's part of the fence strategy. Uh, nothing on the Maslow top, it's going to be good for you. You know, uh, I've tried that argument before. This will help you get a job. Once you have people at the bottom, more workers means you need a manager. You need somebody that'll, no, that doesn't work. Even though it's true, yeah. but more, more workers at the bottom that don't, don't make you feel better. Uh, so that's not the argument. That's not, that's not the feeling to tap. Uh, Self-interest uh, does not override fear as a emotional uh, call out. Mm -hmm. Could we use fear to say, uh, if you don't do it, it's going to be bad? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think someone, a really cynical person, could come up with a strategy for a fear-based reason of some sort. You know, we're, we're going to go under. We'll soon end up being a country full of old people in nursing homes with nobody to take care of us, and we're going to, uh, you know, I'll be out on the streets and dying and stuff because there's nobody here to take care of us. We have, you know, I, I think you could probably do it, but it's not as easy because it's a lot easier to just make you fear somebody than it is to make you fear a hypothetical event. And there's there's been articles out there saying that if all the DACA people have to quit their jobs, it's going to have a huge negative financial impact on the country. Yeah. We're already struggling, <clears throat> but that doesn't seem to matter. No, it doesn't. Apparently. You guys remember what were, what were the terms that we used to use to refer to the 2000, uh, you know, all the clocks were going to stop. The computers were going to stop in the middle oh, of it. Y2000 uh, or was that? Y2K. Y2K. Oh, Y2K. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm typing it in because to me, uh, I was thinking about that this week, you know, in the middle of the night kind of thoughts. Uh, because it was, I remember it being such a big deal. I was, you know. I was now old enough to pay attention. I believe that there would be great consequences. Uh, there was a great movement, you know, like the ozone layer. Uh, and so a worldwide problem, Y2K, we got to get all those computers. Now, I am sure that we didn't go replace all the, all the integrated circuits out there that were based on the old clock. Uh, but it, there was a lot of money spent. I remember being part of that, uh, those decisions even probably, why it's okay. But it was, it, it, it crossed the threshold from this is geeky to, hey, it could be true. What if it is true? Mm -hmm. We better spend some money to make sure it doesn't happen to us. And I don't know who started that, but it, it was pretty, pretty, uh, Maybe it was just the tech people. Uh, but anyway, I don't know what happened. I just know that there must have been a lot of computers that didn't turn over and they, everything, everything's fine. Well, actually, I read an article on that a while back, like maybe last year or so, and someone was talking about it. And their point was that actually it could have been pretty bad, but because people were afraid of it and because we spent a lot of money on it, uh, things were taken care of to the point where noth none of the bigger problems that could have happened did. And so everybody who wasn't involved in that process was like, oh, well, that didn't turn out to be a big deal. But in mm -hmm. fact, it didn't turn out to be a big deal because, because they did. the government oh. spent so much money on it. And they, they were, you know, spouting figures and, and things. And it was like, wow, they really did. They threw a lot of money at this and it ended okay. up being good. <clears throat> Actually, I just found an article that supports your your recounting pretty mm -hmm. pretty well. Twenty years later, the Y two K bug seems like a joke because those behind the scenes took it seriously. I think Five, that's the I'm article 19. that I I read. Well, there you go. Your your recalls faster than the Google search. <laughs> um, but but see that one to me became was an issue. It was an issue that most people didn't know, and then it became fear enough. And then there was money put to it. And it looks like from your report and from time that uh, we're all happy that that did happen. The ozone layer was real. The yeah. ozone holes were real. A lot of money was put into it. PS, PS, PFCs were banned. And uh, the ozone hole became smaller. Yeah. We controlled that one. Uh, so for me, that those are fears. They were based on fact. The immigration stuff is based on fact. But that alternate reality that is so prevalent now hadn't come up at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the kicker, I think. 
Yeah. That uh, distrust of, of information. We still believe scientists back then. Well, manipulated distrust of information. Right, right. And, and actual alternative realities out there and alternative news sources spouting those alternative realities that aren't really reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another, that's another example of how something works in the short term. This is, was a, a cynical ploy to peel people off from trust in the mainstream media so that these alternative media could take over and, and lead them astray or lead them towards the preferred goal. This is, this is where Rupert Murdoch is super guilty of a lot of things because he was behind a lot of this and has kind of uh, pioneered the, the style with his original uh, newspapers and things and turned it into like big, big biz business uh, in Australia and here and UK. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, that's a short term thing. Like, okay, they've gained a lot. There are a lot more people swung to the right because of this and, and peeled away and not trusting. So now they have their own sort of people living in a bubble. But it can't work over the long term because you can't deny reality forever. You can do it for a while. Uh, like the COVID thing was an example of, sure, you can pretend that there's nothing wrong. Uh, but you were rolling the dice and an awful lot of people found out that there was indeed something really seriously to be afraid of. But they were, they went to their deaths, practically their deathbed going, ah, oh, it's no big deal. It's, you know, it's a yeah, it's plot. It's this and that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it wasn't enough people that they learned the lesson. The people that died learned the lesson. Maybe some people in their family learned the lesson, but the majority did not. And so the problem continues. That's all I'm saying. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna, you're gonna support the idea. I, I didn't have time to triangulate it, but there was some, <clears throat> some report that flashed through about um, uh, more Republicans died in the last two years of the pandemic than Democrats. Yeah. Really um, interesting. And so I thought, well, that validates the other part. and. On the mocking side, there was, I remember somebody saying, well, let them not believe. We'll get, you know, more of them will die. You know, we'll, we'll change the electorate that way, uh, which was pretty nasty. But uh, I should triangulate that now just to make sure that I'm not uh, <clears throat> making it up. Yeah, I just read that or, the other day that somebody did the math and they came up with, sort of did it by counties. The counties that went for Trump, more people died than the counties that went for Biden and so on, and uh, that all in all, it was more Republicans, and in Republican-led states, more people died. So this is NBC News, October, mm -hmm. uh, and then <clears throat> Policy Watch. Well, it was echoed quite a bit, Washington Post, and then, however, Washington Post says. No Republicans underperformance in 2022 wasn't due to COVID deaths. And then there was a, they put up an analysis. So a month later, basically saying, yeah, many died, but it didn't affect politics. Yeah, I suspect that that's not correct. I mean, hmm. it, maybe it didn't sway, it wasn't enough to statistically make a difference, but it can't, it can't but have made some difference of some sort, even if it was a very small one. Yeah. You can't take this group and this group and kill more of that one than this one, and then have a contest between, a popularity contest between the two of them and not have it be at least some difference that, uh, there are less of these now than there were of those, or, or less of these than there were before. Yeah. <coughs> but yeah, yeah I get Tom, that. You are so good. I found the, well, in reading the Washington Post article, there you are again, just right as could be. Everyone should just 
listen to to Tom and and, and you know. I just read a lot of it is, So it is a comparison of the counties. The it's charts. It's visual. So that's why I thought I'd do it. Uh, let me see. Oops, wrong article. Wrong article. Sorry. Let me uh, stop sharing and then bring in the correct one. Man, you're good. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> I, I've trusted you for a while, but I, I like getting validation. <laughs> Trust but verify. That's the important thing. Yes, that's, that's, that's my norm with, with whoever, including a friend. But now verifying I'm my friend. Uh, here is... Uh, Tom's very quick description of uh, <clears throat> comparison by county. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pre-vaccine and post-vaccine. There's a difference there. There's a yeah, there, there is, is a, a difference. difference. You are definitely dwelling on the right thing. There is a difference, just not enough to, to change the, the electorate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So it was Ohio and Florida that they were comparing, uh, and that, and these are the assumptions that that happened. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'll stop it. But it was a, it, it's uh, if anybody wants to look it up, this is the article mm -hmm. from uh, November fourteenth. Oh, it's only seven days ago. Man, right. we are current. We're right. All right. Yeah. And Tom, just listen to Tom, and you'll have your problem solved. <laughs> but it's all fake news. It's. So. Well, no, I, I, I resent the, 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 the fake news kind of moniker, blame. Uh, it's like calling out people, you know, with nicknames on, on the playground. Mm -hmm. uh, in Spanish, as you know, we do it a lot, very often. Everybody has a nickname, right. including me. And I went to school. I went to elementary school, mostly in Mexico. And everybody had a nickname. Mm -hmm. And it is not too insulting. You know, there was uh, big nose. It was fatso. Uh, it was skinny. You know, I fit into that one. Um, they, they also called me, my, my grandma called me Mosquita Muerta. The dead, <laughs> the dead, yeah, <laughs> uh, fly. And that's because you call someone that when they are, they're very coy. There must be a word in English when they're really responsible for things, but they do it so coyly that they don't get caught. Ah. But but we suspect who they are, and so they, they, they it, it said it's a fly acting dead, but they're not really dead. Yeah, right. So anyway, that was one of my nicknames from my grandma. But what I'm what I was trying to say is. Many times the nickname is based on some fact, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, thick thumbs, big ears. That was one of mine too. Uh, mm -hmm. But the nickname <clears throat> was based on something physical. It was kind of true, might have been very true, mm 